Hey guys, I'm Ryan and welcome to Mad Acre Homestead. Uh, with this becoming in our coming up on our second year of being on our property, and as well as the years coming to a close, I thought I'd share with you guys uh, 10 goals I have for next year to helping ramp up our property to actually being a functioning homestead. Um, goal one is going to be uh, completing uh, a fence and, and closing in our back portion of our, our property. Uh, this is actually twofold. Um, we have roughly 630 linear fees. I'm going to pan here real quick so you guys can see the property, uh, back of our property here. Uh, once again, we have 630 linear feet of fencing that we need to complete. Um, this is a twofold reason. The first reason is going to be, um, one, uh, is going to be deer and as well as predator prevention. Next year, I would like to put in, uh, flower gardens and meadows in the backyard and as well as some ponds and, we're going to need to uh, be able to keep the, the deer and the bear out, bears out, um, as well as mount lions um, when it comes to uh, the fish and the flowers that we have in the backyard. But also the second reason is we have a set of neighbors who don't like it when our, our dogs uh, wander onto their property. Um, and this is just going to give our dogs a defined barrier of where our property line ends. Um, so they're not going on someone else's property. Goal two is completing the greenhouse. You may not be able to tell but where i'm standing here is actually where my greenhouse is supposed to go it's roughly a six by eight greenhouse um we've been dumping uh, rabbit manure in here and as well as other compostable items um, last year uh we bought a kit uh we didn't get uh get to install a kit due to the fact that the contractor who came uh didn't install our our cement footings correctly um so the greenhouse wouldn't have been level so next year goal is to rip all this out actually get the greenhouse in here uh so we can be able to do starter plants before margin as well as uh do um some microgreens throughout the year in here. And this is where our microgreen operation is gonna be pretty much ran out of is in our greenhouse. Uh, so look forward to that. That is our goal next year, get this done, get the microgreens, get the starter plants in here so we can have a successful garden and uh, be able to take some things to the market. Goal three is going to be um, adding on to our onto our shed here. Um, there's an old saying, when you're building something, multiply by uh, five or 10, whatever it may be. Um, my wife and I didn't do that when we first moved here. We knew we needed a shed of some sort, uh, but we were looking at more of prices versus usage and functionality. Uh, with us having rabbits uh, currently in our garage as a temporary solution, I would like to get the shed moved to a different location, mainly just up um, so it's more functional, but also being able to tie on to the shed um, to add our rabbitry, but on the opposite side of that, being able to tie on to build a little annex um, so I'm able to be able to get our garden tools and our riding mower and our, as well as our, um, our um, trailers and things like that out of the garage and have them somewhere where they're out of the elements and able to be able to uh, be parked. Um, so uh, next year, that is one of our, my goals is uh, getting that completed. So this is another one of those areas you may not be able to tell, but underneath me or somewhere here, uh, there's a 12 by 12, uh, slab that we had poured last year for for patio um, so we can be able to come out and actually enjoy this space uh, we didn't complete the area uh, one thing we need to do is install a, a gazebo so the goal is to get the gazebo installed uh, so we can get out here and enjoy this but also our son graduating next year uh, we want to be able to uh, have his graduation party here on the property uh, so um, that's another thing we got to have completed prior to May so um, we can um, be able to be able to enjoy this this space for the summertime and uh, just be able to sit out outside um, it definitely be a nice addition to our homestead um, being able to have an outdoor uh, entertainment space goal number five is uh, to build pathways and walkways uh, just to define um, some space and as well as compartmentalize and create rooms for our meadows and our flower gardens that I'm looking to grow. Um, 
and once again just to define spaces where we walk um, right now we just uh, we walk anywhere and we wear down the grass or wear down areas and we uh, distort the soil and compact the soil so I want to create actual defined pathways that way we can uh, enjoy the space but also give the space the, the opportunity to become beneficial for us so um, that is goal number five create walkways pathways um, so we can compartmentalize the area be able to grow our flower gardens and be able to enjoy the actual space and the aesthetic of the space goal six is going to be growing a flower garden as well as creating a metal in our backyard um, this is going to be threefold for us. Um, we currently live on an HOA and what it's going to do is going to create a aesthetic pleasing environment for those who may not agree what we got going on on our property, but also it's going to act as uh, food for my bees and as well as the ability to track those beneficial insects and animals that we want on the property to help us grow our food. Um, the third aspect is going to be the privacy aspect because when we have layers and layers on flowers and gardens in different tiers um, of flowers, it's going to create privacy for us to be able to enjoy our property, enjoy the things that we want on our property. Goal seven for me is going to be transferring my top bar hive over to a Langstroth. I built this hive. It's not the best hive or best looking hive or functioning hive, but um, I actually prefer the top bar hive over the Langstroth. But um, the reason I'm transferring the top bar to the Langstroth hive is just the amount of real estate I have. I don't have enough real estate to be able to grow the hives to the numbers I want. I'm looking at having six to nine hive and the top bar hive takes up roughly three Langstroth hives. Um, the reason I prefer the top bar hive over the Langstroth hive is I'm getting into dabbling into uh, making my own candles. And when it comes to the top bar hive, I'm not only able to harvest honey i'm able to harvest wax as well wax comb as well and use that to uh make my candles also the top bar hive is more of a natural feel for the bees so they tend to do uh, do well better and as well as functioning function better when it comes to uh growing out growing out the hive um however with the amount of real estate i have and uh, the amount of uh hives i want um, I'm not going to be able to grow my hives to the number I want. So we're going to get rid of this hive next year and just switch it over to a Langstroth hive. And hopefully, uh, if we ever get to a bigger property, I'll be able to go back to the top of our hive. Our current HOA covenants stifens the, our ability to have certain animals on our property that are beneficial to the homesteading lifestyle. It actually spells out the fact that we can't have chickens, cows, goats, pigs, horses on our property. With that being said, our, goal, our next goal is going to be actually installing not two but three ponds. This is going to be just a, a decorative pond, but we're going to actually install two functioning ponds um 300 gallon roughly 300 to 400 gallon ponds above ground ponds that are going to house uh koi and tilapia um the, the koi is going to be in this one right here as a decorative but the other two ponds are going to be uh, our tilapia that's going to give us a source of meat on the property because the hoa covenant doesn't say that we can't have fish or rabbits so we already have rabbits um and we're going to be installed in the, the tilapia ponds next year um just as a way to have a second source of meat on our property i haven't seen any other homesteads do that so this is going to be interesting uh anybody have any comments about that please share um your uh experience in having tilapia ponds on your on your property Goal nine. So when we first moved to our property, we, we were provided the incorrect covenants and we were under the belief that we had the ability to have chickens on our property. Um, at our peak, we had 30 egg laying hens. Um, 
no roosters, no meat birds. Um, but uh, we were notified by our HOA that we was in violating the violation of the covenants and they gave us 30 days to remove our chickens, which we did. Um, this actually here used to be where our chickens were housed. Um, of course, it did not have the, the wood and all that stuff. Uh, this came out there worse, but we had two coops in here and uh, 30, uh, 30 hens. Um, which we enjoyed. We're hoping to get the chickens back onto the property, but at a smaller amount. Um, I would be happy with uh, five, uh, with ten chickens. Uh, what I would do is five egg laying hens, and then also have uh, five meat birds that I rotate out of course, um, which would give me the ability to be able to put twenty uh, meat birds in my freezer by the end of the year. So that is the goal: is to um, work with our HOA to get the covenants revised, hopefully, and then uh, get the chickens back on the property, um, which would uh, really, really uh, be beneficial to that uh, being independent when it comes to growing our own food on our own property. Okay, guys, we at the last goal um, for 2020, and that's goal number 10. I uh, decided to bring it inside. Uh, it's freezing outside, so I decided to bring it in so I can warm up. But goal 10 is going to be figuring out how to create revenue streams from the homestead versus just taking uh, revenue from our coffins. Um, next year, I'm hoping to breed my Dutch rabbits and sell rabbits, both show and as well as pet quality rabbits. Also, um, I'm looking to keep on with the bee extraction, but also selling honey. And as well as I'm currently dabbling into learning how to make candles. So I hope to sell candles. Once we get the greenhouse up and running, we'll be selling starter plants and as well as microgreens. And then on top of that, um, we're going to hopefully get into cut flowers and whatnot from the from the flowers that we grow. Um, those are just some different revenue streams that I'm looking into. But the most important thing is going to be um, creating those infrastructures so we can be efficient, be able to run, um, have a process that we're able to run efficiently, efficiently, and as well as be able to produce those pro products on a a constant basis. Um, those are just 10 things that I'm looking at for my homestead. If you guys have some different ideas or different things that you're doing on your homestead, uh, please drop comments below, email me, create some kind of dialogue. Pretty please. Um, uh, if you like what I, we're just doing and discussing on our, on our YouTube page, please like, share, and subscribe um, so we can create that community of homesteader or people that are looking to be uh, food independent. Um, that way we can bounce ideas off of each other and grow and learn from one another. Uh, once again, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Um, see you in 2020. Peace.